In previous examples, we've used the for each loop. We've also used the for next loop, but we've always specified the ranges. What I want you to notice here is that we have a two dimensional array. Just like a single dimensional array, it has lower boundaries and upper boundaries. The trick is how to reference the boundaries for each dimension in a multi dimensional array. So here we have our array where we've declared it, and if you notice, it's a two by four array. Down here, we have the different boundaries that we want to reference. So notice here we have the lower boundaries for both dimensions of this array, and here are the upper boundaries for the same array. Now what we want to do is we want to reference the boundaries for each dimension, and the way we do that is, let's look at the first dimension. If you notice the notation here, whenever we list our lower boundary or our upper boundary, we want to also note the dimension that we're referencing if we're working with a multi-dimensional array. So here's the first dimension, the lower and upper boundaries, and here's the second dimension of, of the same array. We now have a better understanding of what an array is, how to load an array, and how to reference the information within an array. What we're going to focus on now is how to transfer data from one array to another. So the first thing we want to look at is transferring data one element at a time. The advantage of this method is that we can manipulate data as we transfer it. We may wish to sort the data or transpose the data or a number of other things. Transferring data one element at a time makes this possible. While transferring data one element at a time gives us control over that data, it is relatively slower. The other way we can transfer data from one array to another is faster, but we have no control over the data transfer. Essentially, we're just making a copy of the array. You can think of this as an instant transfer or a bulk transfer. This is done by treating both arrays involved in the transfer as, as variables. Keep in mind that the receiving array must be of a variant data type in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. In this example, we're going to look at transferring data from one array to another. In this case, we're going to transfer information from a two-dimensional array to a variable of a variant data type. That transfer is going to force the variable to become a copy of the original array with the same dimensions and the same information. So the first thing we're going to note is the declarations that we've made. If you look up here, you notice that I've declared a two-dimensional array. In this case, it's a two by four array. You can think of it as two rows and four columns. Below that is a variable of a variant data type. In this case, I've called it bulk trans array. Actually, it's not an array at this point. It's just a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and run through our code. And the first items that we're coming across is actually assigning values to our two-dimensional array. Now, what I want you to notice here is that I've decided to assign the boundary conditions for each dimension in the array to variables. Notice the notations for each boundary where I reference the array and the dimension. So here I have the lower boundary of our array, and I'm referencing the first dimension. Here, same array, only I'm referencing the upper boundary of that array, also the first dimension, if you notice by that one right here. This is a two-dimensional array. So here, I've noted the lower boundary of our array, but I'm noting the second dimension, and here, the upper boundary of the second dimension of our array. What we're looking at here, this line of code is actually where the data transfer occurs. Now, if you notice, I've listed our array as a variable. I've set our variant variable equal to that array. And what's going to happen is once this line of code is executed, this variable, which is currently empty, is going to become an array that is a copy of our original array. So this is just going to, to copy this array right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now this variable has become a two-dimensional array with this information inside. So the next thing we want to do is we want to test to see if our transfer was successful. All the code you're looking at here just prints out our information right here. So the idea is that we loaded our two-dimensional array with this information listed up here. We came to this line, we transferred that information, and now what we want to do is we want to print that information out here from this array. So let me go ahead and run through the code and see what happens. If you notice, it's printing out our information. So that means that we had a successful transfer from our original array to our transfer array. Now again, the thing to keep in mind is that whenever we made this transfer, we had no control over the data going from this array to our transfer array. It just strictly made a copy of it. So if we wanted to transpose it, order it, or sort it in a different fashion, we couldn't do that. All we did was make a copy of the array. All right, here we have the same setup as our previous example. The difference is that this time, we're going to transfer data from one array to another array, only we're going to do it one element at a time. Notice that I've declared an array, but I haven't assigned it any dimensions. So up here, 
I have my original array, which is going to be two rows and four columns, and below that I've declared another array, but I haven't given it any dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and step through our code and assign values to our original array. Just like before, I'm going to assign the boundary conditions to variables as well. Now at this point, I have my transfer array. And what I'm doing here is I'm redimensioning it. I'm actually going to give it size, whereas before when I declared it, I didn't have any dimensions for it or any size. Using the boundary conditions that we assigned to variables, I'm going to take those variables and I'm going to use them to give this new array a size and dimension. So it's going to be a copy of our original array. All I'm doing now is making it the same size. So it also will be two rows with four columns, but we haven't moved any data yet. So all we're doing here is making sure that our transfer array is the same size and dimension of our original array. The next part of our code is where we actually begin transferring the data one element at a time. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that our references are identical. So we have two arrays with the same dimension, and we want to make sure that when we refer to a row and column in this array, our original array, we are, it's transferring to the same row and column in our transfer array. So stepping through our different boundaries or our different dimensions, we're going to do this transfer one element at a time. So as you can see, our first element is one. So I'm going to go ahead and step through this. And if you notice, we have a row of one and a column of one, a row of one and a column of one here. Our value here is one. Currently, this is zero because we haven't assigned it. But whenever we assign the value, now it's one. So we have two matching values. When we transfer data one element at a time, I may wish to transpose these numbers. I may wish to uh, take a value and perhaps add one to it, or I may wish to sort the data. Whenever I transfer data one element at a time, I'm allowed to manipulate the data as it goes into this transfer array. For the purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to transfer the data from one array to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and step through until we get down here where we want to display our data. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've transferred all of our data from one array to the array that we created. Now what we want to do is we want to see if this array prints out correctly. So we're going to have it print out up here. And I'm going to step through the code and let's see how it prints out. And it looks like we had a successful transfer. And so we know that the transfer was successful. I'm going to do the same thing, only if you notice our data is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manipulate the data as it transfers in. And for every value that I have in this array that goes into our transfer array, it's actually going to be double that value. So let me go ahead and do this again. I'm going to stop us here. There we go. And this time I'm going to transfer it again one element at a time. So each time I pull a value here of 2, when it transfers over to here, it's going to be double that. I'm going to go ahead and just rush through this. There we go. Now let's see what happens whenever we print out. It's going to replace the values up here. And if you notice, we've manipulated the data during the transfer. So essentially what we did was we created an array. And what we said was we want every array in our transfer array to have values double of our original array. This just gives you an idea of what you can do whenever you transfer information from one array to another array, and you go element by element.